What causes celiac disease? Short answer, no one seems to know. Long answer, let's look at some of the possible reasons. Hello my friends, today we are doing a bit of a scientific video today. That's why I've got the glasses on because we're being very smart. That's a lie, I've been getting migraines because I've forgotten that I need to wear glasses. We are looking at what causes celiac disease. I think this is a very interesting topic because there is a lot we don't know about celiac disease and autoimmune diseases in general. Luckily, we've got some good clues into what sets off celiac disease and that's what we're gonna look into now. Just a wee note, we are covering some scientific topics today and I have got my notes on a computer just here. So if you see me looking over here, it's because I can't memorize the scientific thing that I've written down. All right, first, let's remind ourselves what celiac disease is. Very briefly, celiac disease is an autoimmune disease where the body mistakes the protein and gluten, gliadin, as a foreign invader, bad thing in the stomach, and the immune system produces antibodies to fight it off. Antibodies are usually used to fight off bacteria and viruses, not necessarily bred. The antibodies that are produced cause the surface of your intestine to become inflamed and that inflammation damages the beautiful little veli that we've got covering our small intestine. I'm doing this because veli are the finger-like things that cover the surface of your small intestine which increases the surface area therefore allowing you to absorb much more nutrients from your food. Not being able to absorb those nutrients from your food is what causes a lot of the symptoms of celiac disease like iron deficiencies, constipation, it's always always got to mention poop, fatigue, yada yada yada. There are actually over 300 symptoms of celiac disease and I'm not here to name them all today. So that's a brief overview of celiac disease, but why, friends of the court, does it happen? To try and answer this question, we've got to look to autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases are a series of diseases where your immune system mistakenly attacks your body. For example, in multiple sclerosis, the damage is done to the myelin sheath, which I'm not entirely sure if that's how you say it, but the, it's the protective coating that surrounds your nerve cells in your central nervous system. In type 1 diabetes, the damage is done to the pancreas. In rheumatoid arthritis, the immune system attacks the joints and so on and so forth. There are actually over 80 autoimmune diseases and celiac disease is one of the more common ones. There are a few factors that mean you're more likely to develop an autoimmune disease. Being a woman is one of them. Thanks, nature! There is no definitive reason as to why women are more likely to get autoimmune diseases. However, there are some theories that suggest hormones that come into play during childbearing years has something to do with it. Another more solid factor is genetics. People with celiac disease are known to have either HLDQ 2.5, HLDQ 8, or HLDQ 2.2 gene. However, there are people who have this gene and don't have celiac disease. It might mean that you may develop celiac disease in your lifetime, but it is by no means a certainty. Genes obviously come from your birth families, so if you've got a first degree relative with celiac disease, your chances increase from 1% of developing celiac disease to 10%. If I can momentarily relate this back to my own family, I have a second cousin who also has celiac disease, so that's not a first degree relative, but it can help sort of pinpoint which side of the family the gene might come from. Uh, I also think I might have like a second great aunt or something, but I'm not too sure about that. That's why you'll hear doctors say that if you've got a first degree relative who has celiac disease, you should probably all get tested because you've got way more of a chance than just some random unrelated person. <laughs> Along the same train of thought there are races that are more predisposed to developing celiac disease than others but this research can be tricky to look into because of stuff like racial biases. Also if you have an autoimmune disease already it makes you more likely to develop another one which is nice. But aside from all this you could be a woman, you could have the gene that means you could get celiac disease, you could have a family member with celiac disease, you could have another autoimmune disease, but still never develop celiac disease. Why? This is where we start to head into uncharted territories when it comes to research. So a lot of what we're gonna talk about sort of becomes hypotheses rather than solid facts. 
which I want you to keep in mind during this next part. I do not want to be the reason a very incorrect thread starts on Facebook, talking about how pesticides gave them celiac disease. No, we're not taking that away from this, okay? We're actually gonna be talking about the triggers for autoimmune diseases and the research around those triggers. Just to be clear, these ones might not necessarily relate to celiac disease specifically, but autoimmune diseases on the whole. The first trigger that we're gonna talk about is viruses. Viruses are widely understood to potentially be a trigger to set off autoimmune diseases. In fact, gastrointestinal viruses and herpes viruses have actually been linked to the induction of celiac disease. And interestingly, this is one that I have heard quite a lot about in people's celiac diagnosis stories. If I could give you an example, a gluten-free families podcast, the host of that is Ben, and he talks about his celiac diagnosis story, and he talks about how he had a really bad stomach bug. He and his family all got a really bad stomach bug at one time, and while his wife and kid got much better, he continued to experience symptoms, which later turned into finding out that he had celiac disease. Obviously, I'm not saying that that virus that he got caused his celiac disease. It's just an interesting relation and one of many stories that I've heard. Also, Ben's podcast is really good. You should uh, give it a listen if you like hearing about gluten-free people's stories. Anyway, aside from celiac disease, there are a few viruses that have been linked to the onset of other autoimmune diseases. For example, a 2019 study mentions that the influenza virus could possibly be linked to diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, that is. Oh, I forgot to mention, I will of course be citing all of my information down below in the description of this video if you'd like to check out any of these studies that I was looking at for the research of this video. There has also been studies that have suggested a susceptibility to multiple cirrhosis is gained in early childhood with viral infections acting as a trigger. I want to repeat this again, these are not definitive statements. You can absolutely get a virus as a kid and never develop an autoimmune disease. In fact, that's probably the more likely outcome. I just don't want anyone to feel panicked or worried about this. Moving on to the next potential trigger, environmental toxins. There is increasing evidence that has linked environmental exposures to things like silica, mercury, pesticides, and smoking triggers autoimmunity. The research around environmental toxins and autoimmunity is, if I'm quite honest, very difficult for me to understand. I am no scientist, and if I was, it, it wouldn't be in biology, I tell you that. So I'll add some research papers down below if you want to have a look at it yourself, but otherwise let's move on to the next one. Gut microbiome. Now, here is something I didn't know. 80% of your immune system is in your gut lining. What the heck? I don't know why, but I sort of always pictured my immune systems to sort of have a base like somewhere up here around my chest. And then when something happens, they all get like deployed to the areas of the body. Do I think of all my bodily functions as little characters like an inside out? Yeah, yes I do. So because 80% of our immune system is in our guts, any imbalances that we have with our microbiome can contribute to developing a autoimmune disease. But to be fair, a lot of things can affect your microbiome. Age, diet, environmental toxins like we just talked about, stress and trauma like we're gonna talk about next and stuff like that. There have also been studies that support the theory that microbiota play a role in developing celiac disease specifically. It has also been showing that the HLA-DQ genes that we were talking about before can also have an influence on our early microbiota composition. Although the link between changes in the gut microbiota and the development of celiac disease can be sort of shown and seen in studies, once again, the exact role of microbiota in the development of an autoimmune disease is unclear. <laughs> Our last trigger we're going to talk about is stress and trauma. So there's plenty of studies that have recognized stress and trauma as a potential trigger for autoimmune diseases, and not only that, but a lot of other diseases as well. Once again, exactly how this works is unclear. There was actually research done on mice at a university in Israel that identified that the gut bacteria in the mice responded to social stress. Now, I don't know what social stress is for mice, but we can only assume they put one mice in a little room with his two ex-mice, one of which he was cheating on while dating the other. Probably. But basically, they identified that there is a link between stress and gut bacteria, which can play a role in autoimmunity. On top of that, some retrospective studies have shown that a high proportion, up to 80% of patients with autoimmune diseases, said that they had some sort of uncommon emotional stress before they developed the disease. In terms of uncommon emotional stress, that could be like a traumatic event, someone close to you passing away, 
things like that. However, because of the nature of stress, proving that it has a direct link to the onset of autoimmune diseases is incredibly challenging. So once again, there is a link, but no confirmed reason as to why. <laughs> But this whole stress trigger theory kind of makes me think of Deadpool. You know in the movie where he gets put into that capsule and like he's, his body is put under extreme physical stress to try and mutate his genes so he gets like cool superpowers? Kind of makes me think of that but instead of getting superpowers we just get the inability to eat gluten. It's definitely not the same but that's how I think about it. <laughs> I do often wonder if something triggered my celiac disease and what it was, so indulge me while I theorise. I got sick a lot as a child, so maybe a virus from then could have made me more predisposed to developing an autoimmune disease. If I'm thinking back, my celiac disease symptoms started when I was around 15 or 16 years old, which was also the time when there were two massive earthquakes in Christchurch where I lived. But it wasn't just the earthquakes, it was the aftershocks that lasted for a couple of years. So for a long time I always felt like I was on edge, a bit fight or flight. And I know a lot of people felt like that in Christchurch as well. To be fair, I still think about it when I'm walking around London because like most of the city is made of bricks and there's chimneys everywhere and that was one of the main things that just absolutely crumbled in the earthquake. So if there was a stress trigger for me, it was probably something like that. But once again, there is just no way of saying for sure. This is where we're going to finish it up today. I hope you found this somewhat interesting. Let's just remember there is no definitive reason as to why autoimmune diseases happen. We've talked about a few common factors, but there are definitely more than I mentioned today. One website I found even suggested chocolate as a trigger for an autoimmune disease. But don't worry, it was on some sort of like weird health magazine website. Absolutely no citation, so we're going to brush that off the table as though it never existed. At the end of the day, I think we're just the lucky ones. Well... Unlucky ones. I'll see you soon.